Welcome to a thrilling journey back to the Roman Republic, where military might met strategic genius. Today, we reveal the top 10 Roman generals who turned the Republic into an empire. Prepare to be captivated. Lucius Licinius Lucullus was a Roman general and statesman who lived during the waning years of the Roman Republic. We will explore his most significant military accomplishments, particularly his role in the Third Mithridatic War. Lucullus was handed the reins of a military expedition against Mithridates VI, the king of Pontus, a formidable enemy of Rome. Taking over from the Roman general Sulla in 74 BC, Lucullus faced several challenges including a war-torn region and a demoralized army. Yet, through tactical brilliance, he succeeded in isolating Mithridates and forcing him to withdraw from Roman provinces in Asia Minor. His most significant victory came at the Battle of Cabra in 72 BC, where he outmaneuvered the Pontic forces, capturing their camp and forcing Mithridates to flee. Lucullus didn't stop at regaining lost territories, he pushed further east, laying siege to the fortress city of Cyzicus and launching campaigns in Armenia against Tigrons the Great, Mithridates' ally. These military feats made him a celebrated figure in Rome, but they were not without their complexities, including internal dissension among his troops and the political ramifications back in the Roman Senate. Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa was a close friend and trusted military commander of Augustus, the first Roman emperor. We will delve into Agrippa's pivotal military accomplishments, especially his naval triumphs. Agrippa's role was instrumental in consolidating Augustus's rule, particularly highlighted by his brilliance in naval warfare. In 31 BC, at the Battle of Actium, Agrippa faced off against Mark Antony and Cleopatra, who commanded a formidable navy. Using an array of innovative tactics, including harpax, a type of grappling hook, Agrippa managed to corner and disable the enemy fleet. This decisive victory led to the eventual downfall of Mark Antony and Cleopatra, and secured Augustus's unchallenged rule over Rome. Agrippa also engineered an incredible feat of construction, the building of Rome's first pantheon. Not only a general, he oversaw the creation of a vast network of aqueducts and roads. While his military feats are often overshadowed by his association with Augustus, Agrippa was unquestionably a military genius in his own right, crucial to the early stability and expansion of the Roman Empire. Quintus Sertorius was a Roman general best known for leading a rebellion against the Roman Senate in Spain. We will focus on Sertorius's military ingenuity and how he almost succeeded in establishing a power base far from Rome. Driven by a mix of idealism and personal grievances against the Roman Senate, Sertorius departed for Spain, where he garnered the support of local tribes and built an army. His military genius lay in his adaptation to the new terrain and his skill in unconventional warfare, which was crucial in battles such as the Siege of Lauren. He used the rugged landscape to his advantage, setting ambushes and employing guerrilla tactics that confounded Roman legions. Sertorius even established a pseudo-senate in Spain, a move that indicated his aspirations to create an alternative Roman state. His resistance was so effective that it took multiple Roman generals, including Pompey the Great, to counter his efforts. Although he was ultimately assassinated by members of his inner circle, Sertorius's innovative tactics and ability to rally disparate groups against a common enemy made him one of the most notable Roman generals, challenging the very empire he had once served. Gnaeus Pompeius Magnus, commonly known as Pompey, was a military and political leader in the late Roman Republic. We will explore some of his most significant military accomplishments that earned him the title Magnus or the Great. Pompey first rose to prominence through his military successes in Africa and Spain, campaigns that established him as a formidable young general. However, it was his role in the Third Mithridatic War that truly cemented his reputation. Taking over from Lucullus, Pompey skillfully defeated Mithridates VI of Pontus, effectively ending a conflict that had been a thorn in Rome's side for decades. 
he then turned his attention to the pirates plaguing the Mediterranean. In an astonishingly short span of three months, Pompey cleared the seas, using a combination of naval strategy and targeted attacks on pirate strongholds. Later, he contributed to the Roman East's organization, setting a governance structure that would last for centuries. Yet, Pompey's military career also set him on a collision course with other Roman figures, notably Julius Caesar, a clash that would have deep implications for the Roman Republic. Scipio Aemilianus, the adopted grandson of Scipio Africanus, was a paramount figure during the climax of the Punic Wars. We will shed light on his military achievements, particularly his role in the final siege of Carthage. Assuming command during the Third Punic War, Scipio Aemilianus was tasked with the formidable challenge of ending Carthaginian resistance once and for all. The focal point of this campaign was the Siege of Carthage in 146 BC. With a blend of tactical acumen and patience, Scipio encircled the city, cutting off its supplies and weakening its resolve. Over a three-year period, he tightened the Roman grip, using innovative siege tactics, and ultimately breached Carthage's formidable walls. Once inside, the Romans faced fierce urban combat, but under Scipio's leadership, they systematically and ruthlessly took control. By the end of the siege, Carthage was in ruins, and its once mighty empire was finally at Rome's mercy. Scipio's victory wasn't just about military might, it symbolized the end of a rival and the unquestionable dominance of Rome in the ancient Mediterranean world. Marcus Claudius Marcellus was a Roman general and statesman, most renowned for his victories during the Second Punic War against Hannibal. We will delve into his military exploits, particularly his role in capturing the strategic city of Syracuse. Marcellus came into prominence during one of Rome's most trying times, when Hannibal was wreaking havoc across the Italian peninsula. While other Roman generals suffered defeats, Marcellus earned the nickname, the Sword of Rome, for his aggressive style. His most celebrated victory came with the Siege of Syracuse, a complex operation against a city fortified with ingenious war machines designed by the famous mathematician Archimedes. Despite the challenge, Marcellus employed a blend of strategy and brute force to break through the defenses. After a two-year siege, Syracuse fell, and its valuable resources were claimed for Rome. Yet, it wasn't merely about capturing a city, Marcellus's victory weakened Hannibal's allies and bolstered Roman morale. His feats in Syracuse and subsequent engagements against Hannibal's forces earned him five consulships and made him a legend in Roman military history. Lucius Cornelius Sulla was a Roman general and statesman who rose to power during a turbulent period in the Roman Republic. We will focus on Sulla's military feats, specifically his victories in the Social War and his subsequent march on Rome. Sulla first earned widespread recognition for his leadership during the Social War in 91-88 BC, where Rome faced several of its own Italian allies in armed conflict. Through a series of battles and maneuvers, Sulla succeeded in pacifying the Italian peninsula, establishing his reputation as a competent military commander. However, it was his audacious move in 88 BC that would become his most infamous deed, marching his legions on Rome itself to seize power, an unprecedented act in Roman history. The civil conflicts that ensued allowed Sulla to showcase his tactical genius. He defeated his enemies on multiple fronts, from Rome to Athens, and he became known for his ruthlessness as much as his military skill. His victories eventually led him to declare himself dictator, paving the way for a series of reforms known as the Sullen Constitution. This period of dictatorship would leave a profound impact on the Roman state and set the stage for future power struggles. Gaius Marius was a Roman general and statesman, famous for his military reforms that shaped the Roman legions for centuries. We will focus on his key military achievements, especially his victories over the invading Cimbri and Teutons. Marius emerged as a pivotal figure at a time when Rome was under grave threat from Germanic tribes. 
elected consul an unprecedented seven times, his most significant accomplishments came in the battles against the Cimbri and Teutons in the late 2nd century BC. Employing his newly reformed legions, whereby he had opened the ranks to the Roman poor, providing them with standardized armor and weapons, Marius achieved a decisive victory at the Battle of Aquae Sextii in 102 BC against the Teutons. The following year, he delivered another masterstroke against the Cimbri at the Battle of Vercelli, essentially saving Rome from a dire invasion. These victories made him a Roman hero and vindicated his military reforms, which included the Marian reforms that professionalized the Roman army. His focus on discipline, training, and logistical brilliance set new military standards, leaving an indelible mark on Roman warfare. Scipio Africanus was a Roman general who became a legend for his role in the Second Punic War against Carthage. We will focus on his most iconic military achievements, particularly his brilliant campaign in Africa. At a young age, Scipio took command of the Roman forces in Spain, where he successfully dislodged the Carthaginian hold, notably capturing New Carthage through a daring naval assault. But it was his audacious strategy to take the war to Africa that solidified his reputation. Landing on the African continent, he swiftly defeated local armies and won allies, forcing Carthage to recall its great general, Hannibal, from Italy. The two titans finally met at the Battle of Zama in 202 BC. Using a combination of tactical innovations, including a staggered infantry formation and a brilliant cavalry feint, Scipio shattered Hannibal's forces and won a decisive victory. This triumph ended the Second Punic War and made Rome the dominant power in the Mediterranean. The Senate awarded him the Agnomen Africanus, in honor of his victory, a moniker that would become synonymous with military genius in Roman history. Julius Caesar was a Roman general and statesman whose military campaigns changed the trajectory of Roman history. We will focus on Caesar's most significant military achievements, particularly in Gaul and during the Roman Civil War. In 58 BC, Caesar embarked on a military campaign in Gaul that lasted nearly a decade. Through a series of brilliant tactical maneuvers and sieges, like the Siege of Elysia, he conquered a vast territory, extending Rome's borders to the Rhine and making Rome the undisputed power in Western Europe. His commentaries on the Gallic War, a first-hand account, became an invaluable historical and strategic guide. Yet, his most audacious act was crossing the Rubicon River with his army, effectively declaring war on the Roman Senate and igniting a civil war. Caesar's victory at the Battle of Pharsalus against the Roman general Pompey was a masterstroke that left him the uncontested ruler of Rome. His military strategies, including the famous use of the double envelopment tactic and clever use of terrain, became textbook lessons in warfare for centuries to come. Caesar's military genius wasn't merely about battles won, it reshaped the Roman world and set the stage for the Roman Empire. And so concludes our journey through the top echelons of Rome's military legends. These were men of unparalleled strategic genius and bravery, whose decisions still echo through the annals of history. If you found this exploration into Rome's top 10 generals as fascinating as we have, be sure to hit the like button, share, and subscribe for more epic dives into history. Are there any generals you think should have made the list? Leave your thoughts in the comments below.